Okay, folks, we're back. We had a few technical difficulties. <laughs> this is a startup, but that's why I surrounded myself with good friends. Uh, we kind of left off a little bit talking to uh, what, what Tolly was saying about what it's like to be locked up in a cage for 22 hours a day. And Tony was sharing with us his experience in the whites. Yes. yes. So, you know, like I was explaining, you know, when you're in the white, you, you do have the programs. So education is there. Not only is education there, programs are there, but it's only to an elected few, a selected few. Now, what happens is if something goes wrong, say, for instance, one of the prison guards you know, are not satisfied with you, then what happens is, though, they will take that privilege from you and put you back so far back that if by the time it's time for you to get back into the program, your time is up. The reentry program was something that I was very keen on when I was in there because I signed up for it. So when you sign up for the, the uh, reentry program, you are supposed to have a counselor when you are ready for release. They're supposed to interview you, make sure of what your needs are before you even come out of that door. Yeah. So the reentry re program to the correctional facilities are, are not really doing what they're supposed to be doing for the inmates. And as I said, you know, the buck stops at the governor's office. The governor has the power and the resources to do what's necessary for these inmates and the guards to have a relationship that's not about humiliating men and women because they're being humiliated. No one should be locked in a cage. And then when you come out of the cage, you're shackled. That's something we had back in the olden days, slavery. Yes. So, well, I mean, prison as we know it today is a reincarnation I mean, of slavery from the Jim Crow and the alleged drug, you know, war on drugs. But I wanted to, you know, we were saying some things off camera, and I think it's important that I share with you. As many of you know, this is Lieutenant Dan that is sitting next to me, and hey, I'll share something with you. This, this, I put Justin's picture up here with me. So that I never forget, yes, that's my baby. But, yes. It's got my eyes. And he graduated. And he graduated, yes. Um, so because of the experience as a mother that I've had with my son and the police, I mean, every time I turn around, it was something going on. Justin was standing one day at a ATM machine with a hoodie over his head because it's raining. The police picked him up, arrested him, and brought him to to the house uh, because he, you know, he just looked suspicious. A black dude with a black hoodie on standing next to an ATM machine. All righty then. But as a result of that, over the years, I grew a disdain and a hatred for the uniform and I've watched videos and talked to girlfriends and sister friends and other parents who have shared horrible stories with me about the police. But I can sit here next to you, a former lieutenant on the police department and love you. And I mean, I love you. You changed my whole life because you brought, you showed me that even a policeman taking off the uniform you are human, and you have a human experience. You're connected to the human experience. So that's why I can love you. And you, you've you actually opened me up to the point where I would be willing, willing to sit at a table with another police officer. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would be willing to do that because of how I feel about you and how you've changed my life. So I, I just thank you for that, Lieutenant Dan. I love you, thank you. <laughs> Those are the kind of relationships we actually need, yes. especially in our community, because the trust factor of the police and the neighborhood people are very low. So when you come into our neighborhoods and you want to know, well, why won't this person tell about the gun violence that's going on in their neighborhood and they know who it is? Well, it's because they don't have that connection anymore. I remember when I was growing up, police did a lot of walking and they introduced who they were, and we knew them by names, like Officer McIntyre and, and Officer Freddie. We knew these people, 
and they knew us because yes. they came from our communities. But now it seems like the, the neighbors, the neighborhoods are not willing to even open up and dialogue with police officers. Tony, I'm we have that. seen so much trauma between yes. police and our young African-American and Latin American males and, yes. and our even our white American males yes. at this point, Absolutely. you know, and our daughters. We've seen so much negative interaction with them that it's very difficult for a community to embrace the police. And yet, who's the first people we call when we think we hear a burglar at the window, right? <laughs> call a policeman. So, you know, I, I get that. And trust me, I do have a, a certain level of respect for what a police officer does every time he puts on his uniform. Um, and I want to take that over to the way you showed the human experience over on the west side, those people love him over there. Yes. Him and yes. I yes. went with him yep. on the west side. Those people love Lieutenant Dan. Oh, yes. I heard a brother who is definitely not on the legal side of things <laughs> yes. say, I say, I swear I'm a beat from. Come on. <laughs> Don't call him my name. Yes. Give me a good discount. For my Glocko. For my Glocko. For my Glocko. I heard that brother say that if anybody messed with Lieutenant Dan, he would put a cap in his derriere, and that's not exactly a quote. So I want to lead that into saying the way that you as a police officer were able to start a relationship with the community, even on just the west side, how can we get those guards inside of the prison to recognize that these are human beings. We have people who are watching right now who are saying, let them rot in hell, they committed a crime, piss on them. I, I can't really argue. If you've, if you've been the victim of a crime, I can only sympathize, perhaps empathize, but I still have to say that somewhere in all of that is a place of forgiveness. They're still human beings. How do we get the guards and, and, and people, our elected officials who have never stepped in a prison, who don't even know what it's like? How do we get them to see the compassion, to, to be compassionate? How do we do that? So what you're fighting against is culture, um, a culture of, especially anyone in uniform, what they, the, the type of people, doesn't matter if you're, and this is where it crosses over, doesn't matter if you're Department of Corrections or the police, if you're in uniform, um, they usually hire you um, and usually want the job because you're, you're tight at it, right? So you kind of have that kind of um, aggressive kind of uh, leadership role anyway. Yeah. And then what they do is they, they groom you to, 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 and they teach you over and over again in a highly skilled way how not only to defend yourself, but to fight, right? It's yeah. all about defending. It's all about fighting. It's all about, it's all about um, taking they teach us how to take. They teach us how to take freedoms. They teach, teach us how to take property. It's all about taking. They never teach us how. They never teach as a, as a culture. They never teach the law enforcement community how to give. Yes. And that is, the I think, the deficit is that if you, you are selecting people who are naturally going to be aggressive anyway and might be, and then you're teaching them how to not only defend but how to fight, then you're teaching them how to take. Um, which is the same with corrections, right? It's it's how do you how do you take their freedoms more and more away? Yes. But there's never a uh, a moment even where they're like, how do you give? So so to cross back over real quickly to West Center City, after 20 years of policing, and I had this moment of a woman needed help, and the type of help she needed, I didn't even know how to give her. I, I knew how to take her to detox. I knew it, but she needed like she needed housing. She needed other treatments. She needed mental health. I had to call a friend uh, who's a social worker, and I said, where do I go? 20 years of law enforcement. And this is coming from a compassionate place. So they don't teach us how to give. So what I did in West Center City, um, and, and I'm glad that, that you're more comfortable with police, um, there are some wonderful, amazing police officers and corrections officers. There, there are. There are. But I'm telling you, um, number one, we are the many run by the few. Right. So even if they wanted to do that, sometimes the culture or, or the it would be surprised. Stops it. And it's something. And it's also something that is it's 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 uh, it's difficult to sell an entire culture change 
I wasn't able to affect any change that I saw within law enforcement. I had to accept they were my expectations. Yes. So what I did is I just continued to do what I do and continue to get involved. But again, I didn't know about the prison, which you guys were talking about. I couldn't connect. I couldn't emotionally connect with. And so, and so, so I what, what, what can we do? What can we do? How do we get the elected officials? How do we get the, the prison guards? How do we get these people to understand that they're human beings? I mean, you and I, Kim, we go in to visit. And maybe there are people out there, which I'm really hoping that someone will chime in here. I'd love to hear what people are saying and, and what are your comments. I, I'm very interested. A question for any of us here on the panel. But you and I, we go in, we visit, we, we walk in, we hand our badge, and they give us back something and whatever, and the door clanks, and we walk to the, all the way in the back to the orange uniform to sit for 45 minutes behind a glass that's about four or five inches thick. We cannot touch our loved ones. Can't hear them. Can barely hear them. And, and that's, you know, 45 minutes for that. And they're shackled and handcuffed. Shackled and handcuffed. Is that farther, is that farther back when yes. you come in? Yes. So it's all going go in straight, you make a left and go back. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So now I don't know how it is over at, uh, what's this? Oh, I don't know. How are you going? That's all behind glass. That's all of that's behind glass. But SCI is, at, yes, but they have phones. SCI is at tables. You yes, can sit, sit at, a table. at yes. a table. Yes. Yes. I'm visiting there uh, next week. I'm yes. I want you watch to go the see Jeffrey. Watch the difference. You will be amazed. And, what, what, well, and how is yeah. that? Because I hear some people say that down SCI, that's good old boy country, and they're really still, excuse my language, they're hanging niggas from trees. You yes. can still smell fresh fruit, you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, and SCI down in Georgetown. Yeah. But then I hear other people say it is the best. Like their humanitarian experiences, yes. people can talk and have contact visits. Yes. So what? And they're both in the same state. So how do we get two prisons in the same state? And yet, what is this? You know what Commissioner because Phelps told one is me? Maximum. That's what he told That's me. Why. Commissioner Phelps told me that. Well, you know, James C. Vaughn is a uh, five, level, a level five, five mm -hmm. commission, you know, maximum security prison, the only one in the state of Delaware. So we send the worst of the worst there. And that's kind of scary. Human. They're still human. They're, they're still they're human. Humans. You know, one of the things they need to start doing is they need to look at the model that we have. Because this Delaware was first Commonwealth. When they changed the law from Commonwealth to TIS, truth and sentence, that's when the real problem yes. started coming down. Come on, Tony, so teach so it. They understand that we now, because we've been educated, we know that this Commonwealth should come back to Delaware yes. and that the judges need not have that power that they have because that power that they have, they are, they are abusing it. All up and down Delaware. Is that abuse the abuse of discretion? Is that the 4217? No, the no, 4217 is. Oh, we didn't Come on, Kim. Come on, Kim. <laughs> okay, so I, 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 I learned what it is. Tariq filed a 4217. His counselor filed a 4217. It involves something, an extraordinary circumstance that you did, uh, your rehabilitation. However, you are not allowed to go in front of any board to speak for yourself. You are judged by correctional officers. How many boards are there? There are, I mean, call four your or five. Five, four, four or five. Yes. And any one of them now, is fine. At the, the very first board is DOC itself. Yes. Department. And everyone Correction. can stop you. Right? Yes. Now, what happens? So, if you complete that, what happens after? Like, let's say you get through all five miraculous. And the miraculous and, 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 Am I right? Has there only been five people? It, yes. That it was ever completed? The four yes. Five, yes. Five, yes. Five, five people. Yes. That is an atrocity. Here's it's the thing. It, what is sad is that in Tariq's case, he protected Miss May. He saved her. He saved her life. 
Okay. And now, for those that don't know, Ms. May is the counselor, yes. uh, doctor counselor that was uh, during the riots. Um, she she and someone else was saved and protected by some of the inmates. Uh, they protected her from the other inmates. Now, he, and Tariq is one of those walls. A very fine line in there. I'm so sure. There are guards that have come up to him and said to him, you protected her. Really? You didn't even protect your own color? You protected her. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Tariq is African-American and Miss May is white. Then there are inmates that don't want to be near him because why didn't you let us have her? Yes, and that's a problem, right. too. There's a whole different culture inside the prison yes. than there is out yes. here. Yes. And again, I'm going to say it one more time. How do we get our elected officials, the very people who are creating the policies, the laws, some of the judges who are sentencing people there, how do we get them to spend two or three hours just walking around prison on the inside, the belly of the beast, and really see what 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 the policies that they're making and how they affect the people in there? Well, one of the things you're doing right now, you're getting the public involved because that's their loved ones that are in there. Yes. They need to make some intelligent moves. Yes. Say it again. They need to make some intelligent moves. I have been That's calling on life. parents and loved ones of incarcerated people. For, I started this movement about a year and two months or so ago. I am still looking over my shoulder for 10,000 mothers. Yes. Just Can I just get 10,000 mothers to stand with me all across America mm -hmm. and say you but want the reform? the problem is... Please in Delaware at Vaughn, the boys are afraid. The men are scared. Don't make don't make too many waves that's because right. here they come. They're gonna retaliate. Yes, and right. that's what happens. So then you're limited. Yeah, so I, I think I think there's the population that you really want. So not only do you want the people who are getting um, you know that direct suffering from it. But you need the people like me, the people who never had the experience and don't know how, wouldn't even know where to start, how to connect. That's why I couldn't connect. I connected. I understand human value. I can connect to the, the human experience, but I couldn't connect to, to prison reform because I didn't. I wasn't in it. I didn't understand it. To have the experience I did, the, the, just this, the simplicity of just going and meeting somebody. Having 45 minutes, having to go through the process, meeting somebody, having to sit on that bench, having the wall in front of you, having him sit awkwardly as far so you it's it's you can't even communicate. Watching children trying to um, get over the wall to hug their fathers, and, yet, and me putting my hands on there and getting yelled at, yes, and me yes. saying what. What do you mean I can't hug you in the middle? Mm -hmm. No, you can, because look at the thing. It says, putting your free. hand on the walls yes. will make them take the so prisoner. What, yes. what they can do, how about they, if, how about they introduce, they connect with one single person, like I did. Connect with one person and say, can I meet you? I'd like to meet you for 45 yes. minutes. Yes. That experience to me was the beginning of understanding. You, you, I think forcing the whole issue on people even people who I was willing to accept it, 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 it's too much, it's overwhelming. But it's the human connection, it's the experience of, of, what, of meeting one single person. When I, left that, when, I, when I left that facility, I was forever changed, forever changed. The, they, the, the, it, 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 it took from me the experience, not the meeting these two amazing, brilliant men, men but I felt that the, the whole system was draining me and it was unfair and it was it was it was the it was sterile. It was not only humiliating, right? It was humiliating for of course I I hadn't seen this man since high school. And I couldn't even I couldn't even hear him because there were so many people it was echoing. I wanted to touch, I wanted to connect and that experience is what people need. It's what I needed. And then you realize, oh my God, th 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 these are human, not only human yes. beings, they're, they're being not only treated inhumane, but why are they still in prison? Like yes. most of them are either, and they, they've been schooling me, 
But the, the men have been talking about. They don't even need to be yeah, there anymore. But most of them have have addictions, have substance abuse issues. Right. They should be in treatment. They should be in treatment, not even in prison. But you, I, which is another thing that yes, we, we yeah. have to bring that but to the yes. court table. Yeah. But does anyone here have any knowledge or information on what's going on in women's prisons? I have one thing to say. How do you go to prison as a woman and be pregnant? How do you get pregnant in prison as a woman? I don't understand what happened. Well, what happens I'm is, playing dumb because I want somebody to explain to me how does a woman go to prison? And I'm, go, I, I, I'm going to the women's correctional facility Tuesday, but I have a vasectomy, so it's not going to be there. <laughs> I just I'm out. So what happens is, is that the prison guards find themselves being attracted to the women, and then they play devil advocate. So the women get pregnant by the guards, male guards. Mm. And then it's hush hush. You don't think it happens? Well, they get benefits. They get benefits for having sex with the. Absolutely. Yes. Female guards at home. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. I have a letter from them. I understand too that the prison is not only just a prison, but it's a city inside of a city. It was its own culture. Just men. Yes. Or the women. Their rules. And there it is. And you have to understand that. The human mind can adapt to any situation you put it in if it's in there long enough. What's happening is the politics is too much because now they can't get away from it because of the money. The mighty dollar, it controls what goes on inside of our institutions. And until we can get the, the public to understand that your tax dollars is being used yes. to abuse people. Yes. That's the problem. It is. But so many people don't know it. And I believe that, you know, when, when I first started this whole movement, I was just a mom standing up raising hell for her son. That's all I could do. He calls me Mama Bird. All I could do was think to raise hell. And then I started going to the places to find out who's the players on the board. Yeah. That was big for me. I went to Legislative Hall and then I found out who the activists are, who are the advocates, who does what, who gets along with who. I said, okay, I see how you, I see what we're doing here. Once I understood that, I said, now what can I do to bring down the Goliath? I had a vision, a dream, uh, you could call it a, whatever you want to call it. Woke me up at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning saying, you don't have to do anything. You are not the one to bring down the Goliath. You are to be the trumpeteer mm. to raise the awareness of the people so that they will gather and the David will bring them down. The David will spring out of that. So I'm excited to see who's going to be the one. Could it be, well, I don't want to say, but could it be, who's going to be the one to really make the change? But as a person um, that was, and I am on the board of the Department of Corrections, I'm telling you, they are telling me the same excuse over and over again. We can't let them out of the orange because they're a risk. And I say, that's a lie from hell. But we'll, we'll get to that on the next They're a risk because they've been in orange for so, so long. long. Yes, I mean, enough to drive you crazy. My son's been down there 12 for eight years. years. 12 years to get in, in solitary. Okay, finally got out, went to minimum B building, uh-huh. and the 4217 was denied. That started the spot. That's it is, horrible. It, you We've know, got to get ready yeah. to wrap it up, but I want to make sure that everyone gets to say uh, what you want to say, so finish up. With no, you. I'm sorry. I was just thinking about what we're talking about. It's a, um, it, the experience, what they're, what they're forcing the culture they're forcing in there is is totally against what we were designed to do as humans. It's like telling us right now, hey, from uh, this hour, the next hour, and for ten hours afterwards, you guys are going to breathe underwater, and it's just going to do it. It's, it's against natural. it's against what we were designed to do. Yeah. All right, folks, we got to close out. Tony, did you have something you want to say really quick? Well, I just want to say, you know, that it's a movement and it takes time, and we got time, and I hope that you guys will. Thank you. We hope that you'll come back and visit. Kim, do you want to close out with something? Yep. Write your legislators, call, make some intelligent noise. Get it going, please. <laughs> awesome. I love Kim. And we'll close with Dan. No, you can't close. It's your show. Okay, okay. okay. say a quick something because we do got to close. Um, just remember, always try to see the unseen. 
Always try to engage those who are unheard. Try to be a part of the world. Try to be a part of, um, you know, making things better. You don't have to change everything. You just need to change one single, like, one single human being, one at a time. And I love you, and I love you. <laughs> and I just want to say, Rochelle Wilson, on behalf of all of my guests, thank you so much for joining in. Thank you for chiming in. Look for us here every single Thursday at 7 o'clock. We're going to be here doing what? Making some Oh, I screwed it up. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I didn't know we were all doing it together. <laughs> I didn't either. It was just Nicely yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to do this again. Yes. We're going to do this again. Okay, well, my mom fiance used to tell me about something because I tried to get her to come on and be involved. Yes. Your feed is private. So, um, oh, you got to open it. I started sending it to other people as well. So, because I saw that. You How did it get private? No, so, like, that's the default setting. Oh, okay. Even your friends can be able to see. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, change it right now. I don't know what that is. Damn, so what does that mean? They didn't see it?